welcome, welcome! I am loving the love on episode one of this build, and also on the new short film, Madly in Love, which is the whole reason this mallet was even born. So thank you guys, you're so awesome. I love it. All right, so let's not waste any time jumping into episode two, the EVA episode. So Mikey's version of Harley is a creative take on our girl. So we're not directly following any reference pictures for this build, but if you do want to make it accurate, you can still use all of the same techniques that I'm gonna be using in this video. Just tweak the design here and there according to your reference photo. Okay, so. Before we start chopping up foam, let's take a quick look at the plan for this build so we can better understand the silhouette that we want and what shapes we need to cut to make it happen. So right now we have a perfect cylinder, right? Hmm. Let's go a little more 2D for this explanation. Perfect. So here's our base. Now let's say we cover it all in foam. Just doing this would work for the mallet, no doubt, but it does not have that curve that I like. How can we get it? Well, we just make all of our foam pieces a little bit bigger. Let's make the wooden boards a little bit longer than the length of the base. That way, when you beef up the end caps, the overlapping boards will be forced outward, creating the bow. By just attaching the boards to the base in the middle and the higher up end caps, boom, we've got our silhouette. Now we just need to cut out two end caps, one for each end, and approximately six boards, give or take, depending on how wide you cut them. Supplies for this episode include EVA foam, of course. <laughs> I used four 24 inch squares and had a little bit left over after. A sharp blade. I used a combo of a box cutter and an X-Acto knife, depending on what my cutting needs are at the moment. A rotary tool, we'll get more into that later. And a straight edge. Contrary to how it may look in episode one, I'm not really an exact measurement kind of girl. Instead, I kind of just plop the base down on the foam, make some marks, and cut it up. I eyeball the shape and size of things like 90% of the time, <laughs> which sometimes gets me in trouble. So by all means, feel free to do the math and figure out exactly how wide these should be to cover the surface of your mallet. Or you can just be like me and stack them up around the base and go, eh, that looks close enough. EVA foam is very, very dense. So actually cutting it is kind of a thing on its own. It can be tricky. My biggest piece of advice for cutting EVA foam is to always use a fresh, sharp blade. It will make your life so much easier, even when intentionally going for messier looking cuts like we're doing right here. Again, the foam is dense and sharp blades always cut using less force than it takes dull blades to do the same job. For that reason, dull blades cause tons of accidents and injuries, so be careful and be safe. While safety precautions are always required, flawless EVA slicing skills are not required on this build, not at all. Fortunately, you don't want to make your cuts look super clean, so if you end up kind of hacking at pieces or having to saw at them to break them apart, or if your line goes a little bit crooked, it's not a big deal, really doesn't matter at all. Actually, if your cuts were perfectly clean, it would only make more work for you in the end because you'd have to come back and rough them up so they don't look like EVA foam anymore. So don't be intimidated. You got this. Cool, so now all of our pieces are cut out. We should probably carve them up like wood, right? I mean, that's why we're all here. Get to the good stuff, Paletti. All right, let's go. Starting on the ends of each piece, I cut out little slices all along the edge. Some long slices, some short slices, some wide, some thin, really just random AF. You don't want any two pieces to look exactly the same because we want this to look as natural and unmanufactured as possible. Easy first step. After that, I want to add in a texture that looks like crumbly, rotting wood. The way that I do this is by using my X-Acto knife to make a little cut into the foam and then I just pull at it with my fingers. Picking at it lets the foam rip and crumble in a more natural kind of way that doesn't look too like intentionally cut. I do that a lot to add depth and a decaying type texture. I focus this technique mostly along the outside edges and the deeper cuts into the wood. Next up, I score little lines into the foam with my X-Acto knife. 
These little lines will mimic wood grain texture, so do as many as you'd like to make your wood seem more or less realistic. To make them, just press the tip of the knife into the foam and drag to create the lines. You can vary how deep they are, from just barely denting the surface to some really deep grooves, but try not to cut all the way through. Oh hey, you will not be able to get the full effect of these slices in their final form until you add heat. Heat seals foam and shrinks it up a little bit, which pulls the tiny slices apart, opening them up and making them more visible. So while they may look insignificant now, they will add a nice touch later on. The rotary tool. So many questions about this on the last video. A rotary tool is a $20 difference maker when it comes to EVA foam. The difference of what you can do with this tool versus an X-Acto knife is bonkers. Miles between the two, in my opinion. A rotary tool just rotates. It spins whatever head you put on it really, really fast. And that's what it does. This model that I use can run between 8,000 and 30,000 RPMs, which is certainly fast enough to dig into foam, even on the lower setting. Depending on the attachment you use, rotary tools can do different things. So you can use it to carve and add texture, but you can also use it to smooth stuff out with sanding attachments, polish, engrave. You can do a lot of stuff. It is a great, affordable, multi-use tool to have in your arsenal. So here is the attachment that I'm using. I have very officially named it the ice cream cone attachment. I use it to drag lines out across the foam, varying the pressure that I use to press down so that some areas are deeper and other areas are shallower. Remember, nothing too uniform. I use it to create knots and holes and just general wood irregularities. I also use it to messy up the edges if they still look like clean cut foam slices. This is one of my favorite parts of the build because this tool is just so satisfying to use. It's like drawing, but creating an actual tangible texture, dips and grooves and all that kind of good stuff. In addition to making all of those surface irregularities, I also go back over all of those edge slices that I made with my X-Acto knife. Think of the X-Acto knife slices as a first draft, and then the rotary tool just accelerates it to the next level. Just a real quick run over those edges gives it such a better natural looking finish and it really does make it look a lot more like wood. When you are working with a rotary tool or any kind of tool that will be carving into foam, wear a mask or a cover over your mouth and nose. Even if it doesn't look like anything is coming off, anytime you dig into foam, tiny bits of black foam dust are flying everywhere. Protect yourself. Thank you. This next bit deserves some credit where credit is due because I think it is brilliant. I first saw this technique done by Jack of All on YouTube and I am obsessed with the level of detail that this added. He just poked little holes into the exposed ends of the wood. Something so simple yet so effective. I think that he used an attachment on his rotary tool but literally anything that is relatively pointy should be able to pierce the foam. I'm just using a clay dotting tool and jabbing it in there over and over again all along the exposed edge. And the last step is to just heat seal these guys and we're all set. Now we are done with the EVA pieces, but there is still more cutting and carving to be done. You know that badass custom Glam and Glore logo on the end cap? That is a three dimensional logo that stands out from the rest of the wood. For this detail, I am using just basic craft foam that you can find at craft stores. So odds are, unless you're named Mikey or are a Glam and Gore zombie super fan, which TBH, who's not, you might want a design other than Mikey's logo on your end cap. You can put literally anything you can think of on here using this same technique. Just draw whatever shape you want onto the foam and then cut it out with an X-Acto knife or even just scissors. This foam is thin and light and can be easily tackled by scissors. Then just like with the EVA foam, I score all of those little details into the foam. Adding all of the little wrinkles into the hands and lips really take it from like 70% to like 10,000% awesome, especially when we get in there with paint in the next episode. And speaking of the next episode, it's about that time you guys. All of our pieces are now cut and carved and prepped for paint. 
In the next episode, all of your paint questions will be answered. If you are digging this series so far, like, subscribe, and bell me. Bell me? I don't know. Hit the bell. Okay, babes, see you soon for episode three. I love you. I'll see you next time. Bye!